Welcome to the video tutorial on the topic Layout Managers and Swing Overview. This topic is from 6th module and this belongs to the course outcome Develop Applets and GUI Programs in Java. This topic is a continuation, Layout Manager topic is a continuation of AWT controls. The objectives of today's session are to illustrate layout managers, then to give an overview of Swing, to demonstrate Swing components and containers and to understand the basic difference between Swing and AWT. So we start with Layout Manager. What is a Layout Manager? Layout Managers are used to position the components in a container. We know what is a container and a component. In AWT there are several components like text box, button, uh, text field, text area, checkbox, checkbox group, etc. And container is a component that can that is able to hold all these components. We have studied several containers like applet, frame, panel, window, dialog, etc. So containers are able to hold or position the components. And layout manager will help to position the components in an order in a container. Every container object has a layout manager associated with it. And layout manager, we can set the layout manager using set layout method. And if there is no call to set layout method, then the default layout manager is used. So if you are not specifying a call or if you are not specifying the type of layout manager, then the default layout manager will be used and it helps to position the components in a container. And how to use this set layout, how to set layout method? The format is void set layout. Then as an argument, we have to pass the reference of the desired layout manager. There are mainly, there are many types of layout manager. Some of them are flow layout manager, border layout manager, grid layout manager. Then there are other types like uh, card layout manager. Please refer that it is uh, there in your textbook. Now we can study flow, uh, three types of layout managers in this session. First flow layout manager. Flow layout manager is the default layout manager. And this, it implements a very simple layout style. Then how the components are laid out using this flow layout manager. It starts from upper left corner of the window and they, the components are laid out line by line beginning at the upper left corner. And when a line is filled, the layout will advance to the next line. So components are laid from upper left, laid out from upper left corner. When a line is completed, it will advance to next line. A small space is left between each component. Space is left between each component. Space is left above and below as well as left and right. This is how layout manager works. So it is a default layout manager and it implements a simple style. Then there are three type of constructors for a flow layout manager. First one creates a default layout. There is no argument. It centers the components. It places the components at the center and it leaves 5 pixels of space between each component. So first format will leave 5 pixels of space. Second format, there is an argument called alignment. So it, is, can, we can, it lets you specify how each line is aligned. It is possible to place the components at left or center or right as well as leading edge and trailing edge of the window. So using this argument alignment, we can specify how each line is to be aligned, where the components is to be placed, whether it is left or center or right. This is an example program for flow layout. Here we are placing the components on an applet window. So we have to import java.applet package to use AWT controls or AWT to handle AWT events we have to use java.awt package our uh, code name is f layout it extends applet inside the init method we are specifying the type of layout so inside init method we are giving set layout and we are specifying where the components are to be placed here we are specifying it as center components are to be positioned at center 
and in this program we are creating three buttons add save and cancel and we add all these buttons to the applet and they should be positioned at the center so this is the sample output of this program we can see that there are three button controls and all these controls are placed at the center and there is space between each component five pixel of space is left between each component so this is the first type of lay layout manager first one is flow layout manager next one is border layout border layout class implements a common layout style for top level windows and it has it places four narrow fixed width components at edges it places the fixed width components at four edges and there is a one large area will be there in the center and four sides are known as north south east and west and middle area is called center so using border layout the components are positioned at four sides north south east and west also there is a middle area large middle area called center and it has two constructors first one without any argument that creates a default border layout second is constructor with two arguments horizontal and vertical these arguments allow us to specify the horizontal as well as vertical space to be left between components if you don't specify that default space will be left otherwise we can specify the amount of space to be left and when adding components you will use these constants with the following form of add so there is a change in the add method when you add components we have to specify the component object and the object region object region means whether it is at center or north or south or east or west this is an example for border layout here also we are adding controls to applet window the class name is b layout dot class and inside the init method we are specifying the layout set layout the type of layout is border layout we are creating four buttons add save cancel and okay and where it should be placed that is specified when you add that button to the applet so add a dot a comma border layout dot east that means button a should be positioned in the east region button b to the north button c to south and d to west this is the output of this program there are four buttons at four regions and there is a center middle area next one is grid layout grid layout lays out components in a two dimensional grid so it is like a two dimensional array a two dimensional grid so we have to specify the number of rows as well as column the constructors are a default constructor without any argument second one is constructor with the two arguments num num rows and num columns third one is with four arguments number of rows number of columns the horizontal space and vertical space so first form creates a single column grid there is no separate rows and columns it creates a single column grid layout second one creates a grid layout with specified number of rows and columns and if you want to specify the horizontal and vertical space to be left between components we can use the arguments horizontal and vertical also the num rows and num columns can be given as zero if you specify num rows as zero it allows for unlimited length column and if you specify num column as zero it allows for unlimited length rows so grid layout it creates a grid with a specified number of rows and columns two dimensional grid this is a program that demonstrate grid layout here also we are using applet window our program name is grid layout demo and we are setting a value ns that is for specifying the rows and columns and set layout new grid layout n comma n that is we are creating a 4 by 4 grid there are four rows and four columns so there will be total 16 cells are there and here we are setting the font for each cell and uh, we are adding around 16 buttons so each to each cell we are adding a button control and we are giving name of button as numbers 
1 to 15. So this is a program. When you run that program, you will get an output like this. It is a two-dimensional grid with four rows and four columns. And for each cell, we are adding a button control. And name of the button control is given as 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So we familiarized the three types of layout managers, floor layout, border layout and grid layout. Then, then we move on to the next topic that is swing. So when we started the AWT topic or AWT session, I have told that AWT is very integral part of GUI, Java GUI. But they are heavyweight components. I will explain what is heavyweight in the next slides. And to overcome the limitations of AWT, AWT, Sun has developed a new set of classes that provide more powerful and flexible GUI components. That is known as Swing. And it was introduced in 1997 by Sun. So Swing is you Swing will overcome the limitations of AWT or Swing will fix the problems associated with AWT. But it won't replace AWT. Swing is built on the foundation of AWT. So knowledge in AWT is very crucial for developing GUI and AWT is still a crucial part of Java. And Swing is built on AWT and Swing provides more powerful and flexible components and it also provides the look and feel of modern Java GUI. Swing also uses the same event handling mechanism as AWT. So I told AWT has several disadvantages and Swing will uh, overcome Swing overcome the limitations of AWT. So we will see what are the limitations or what are the issues associated with AWT. It provides limited graphical interface only. It defines a basic set of controls, windows and dialog boxes but it provides a limited GUI. Why this limitation? Why is the lim why, what is the reason for limited nature of AWT? The reason is that every time it has to translate its visual components into their corresponding platform specific equivalent. That means they have to convert these components into their corresponding OS related equivalents or peers. So the look and feel of the component is defined by OS or platform not by Java. When you use AWT components, the look and feel is specified by the platform or operating system. It is not specified by Java. So since AWT components use native code resources or resources of OS, they are referred as heavyweight components. So AWT components are heavyweight components. The look and feel is provided by the platform and not by Java. So this use of native peers or conversion of code into native specific code leads to several problems. Because of variations between operating system, a component might look differently on different platform. There is no platform compatibility. It diff looks differ on different platform. So this is a threat to principle of Java. Write once, run anywhere principle. It will affect that principle of Java. Because the AWT components might look differently on different platform. Because the look and feel is fixed by, it depends on the platform. It is not defined by Java. Then second problem is most of the heavy, uh, heavyweight components are rectangular and opaque. Then what are the features of Swing over AWT? What are the key features of Swing? The important feature is swing components are lightweight. Almost all swing components, there are few exceptions, remaining all components are lightweight. That means they are written entirely in Java. They are not converted to native code. They do not map to platform specific peers and they can provide non-rectangular shapes also. And these lightweight components are more efficient and more flexible. And their look and feel is determined by swing not by underlying platform. So there is consistency how each component will work in a work across all platform. They will work in a consistent manner across all platform because the look and feel is determined by swing itself not by underlying operating system. So this is a very important feature of swing. Swing components are lightweight. 
then it supports a pluggable look and feel. What do you mean by pluggable look and feel? Since each component is rendered by Java, look and feel of the component is under the control of Swing. It is possible to separate the look and feel of a component from logic of the component. That means visual representation of a component and logic of the component are separate part. It becomes false. We can change the way that a component is rendered without affecting the event handling mechanism or without affecting any of other aspects of that component. It is since the look and feel and logic of component are separate, we are able to change the way the component is rendered. Then what do you mean by look and feel? It is a collection of appearance and behavior of the GUI component. So look and feel means the collection of appearances and common behavior of various GUI component. Pluggable look and feel architecture means we are able to change the look and feel of graphical user interface at runtime. You are able to change the look and feel of graphical user interface at runtime. We can change the entire appearance with the one or two lines of code. That is what, what do you mean by pluggable look and feel architecture, PLA of architecture. So we can change the look and feel of components at runtime. And common look and feels are one, one is known as metal, another example is synth, motif is another look and feel. Motif look and feel is for Linux or Solaris OS. And metal look and feel is a cross platform look and feel, it works in any platform. And it has, this pluggable look and feel has several advantages. We can define a look and feel that is consistent across all platform. Also it is possible to create a look and feel that for a particular platform. So we can create appearances that are consistent across many platform or you can create look and feel that acts for a specific platform. Suppose we are developing an application that will run only in a Windows environment. Then we can specify Windows look and feel. So we can develop or create look and feel that acts for a specific platform. If our program works only in window, we can specify Windows look and feel. These are some of the features of Swing components. Then uh, we will have a look into the architecture of Swing. You don't have to study the architecture of Swing in detail. Just understand the concept. And Swing architecture is rooted in MVC design. MVC mo means model view controller design. So a model will represent data of the application. That will a model will save current state of the application. That means suppose if scroll bar is a component, model will save what is the position of the scroll bar now. What is the minimum value of the scroll bar or what is the maximum value of the uh, scroll bar? What is the width, etc. All those current state of the data will be recorded by model. View represents visual, how that component is displayed, the visual representation of data. Controller is one who takes the input from the user and handles that events and update changes to model. So Swing architecture is built on MVC pattern. MVC M means model, V means view, and C means controller. And model is responsible for maintaining the state of information of various components. View uh, handles visual representation of the components. Controller handles event handling, and it, it passes con uh, chain, uh, updates to model. So this is a pictorial representation of model view architecture. View determines which events are to be passed to the controller. Controller will handle these events and they will update the model based on events received. Model is one who maintain the state of information. It passes required data to the view for rendering. So this is the three elements of a model view controller architecture for a scroll bar. If you take scroll bar, the what is model, what is view and what is controller. Model is one who keep track of state information of the scroll bar what is the minimum value of the scroll bar what is the maximum value then what is the width of the scroll bar like that view the responsibility of view is how to render that scroll bar visual representation and controller will handle even related aspects that will it, it can accept a mouse click on end button it will accept a mouse drag on thumb and based on this it will update the model it will update the value stored in the model
So swing uses a simple variant of MVC design. The MVC design used in swing is known as model delegate. There is only a small difference. The view and control is combined to a single object known as UI delegate. And there is so a component consists of two parts. One is model and second is UI delegate. UI delegate is view and controller together. Then we will see what are the components and containers of Swing. We have already studied components and containers of AWT. Then what is the difference between both? Swing components are derived from J component class, but AWT components are derived from component class. J component provides functionality that is common to all components and it provides pluggable look and feel. But J component inherits AWT classes like container and component. So swing is built on and is compatible with AWT. Every swing component is built on and compatible with AWT component. And the package required is Java X dot swing. Swing components are represented by classes defined between Java X dot swing. So swing components are derived from J component class. J component class inherits AWT classes like container and component. And you have to study uh, some of the names of sync components. Uh, it was this question was asked in previous uh, question papers. You have to study at least names of 10 swing components. It is easy to learn. If you look at this table, you can see that it is similar to the components of AWT. Only difference is every component is preceded with a J. J radio button, J text field, J text pane, J label, J viewport, J applet, etc. And please study at least 10 names of 10 components then what is a container containers are two types in swing heavyweight container and lightweight container the first top level containers are j frame j applet j window and j dialog we have studied similar type of containers in a awt like frame applet window and dialog in swing it is j frame j applet J window and J dialog. They inherit, they do not inherit J component. They inherit component and container class of AWT. Since they inherit from these classes, they are heavyweight containers. Top level containers are heavyweight containers. Second type of containers are lightweight containers. They inherit from J component class. One example of lightweight container is J panel. That is a general purpose container. And these containers, lightweight containers are often used to organize and manage a group of related components. Lightweight components are used to manage and organize group of related components. Lightweight containers are inherited from J component and one example is J panel. So there are two types of container in swing. One is heavyweight that is J applet, J frame, J window etc. Other is lightweight container. They inherit from J component class, example J panel. And some of the swing package and the basic package is Java X dot swing. Another example is Java X dot swing dot event. Then we will see a simple swing application. It is similar to AWT application. So we have to import Java X dot swing package. Then first we are here, we are using a J frame container. So we have to create object of JFrame container. JFrame object name is equal to new JFrame. Then you have to pass a title. We have to set the size. Then here there is another line of code. JFrame dot set default close operation. JFrame dot exit on close. That is even if you close the close button or close uh, symbol in the JFrame window, the program will not be terminated. So in order to terminate the program, when you close the ap application, we have to use this line of code. Then we are creating a label with string swing means powerful GUI. Then we are add, we have added that we are adding that label to JFrame and making its visibility to true. Then there is some difference in the main program. Uh, here, in addition to main thread, there is an event dispatching thread for swing. So event handling is controlled by this thread. So in order to manage that, we have to use these lines of code. You have to implement runnable interface 
and you have to pass that in uh, interface object to method invoke later then it will then we are calling the run method inside the run method we are creating the constructor of the swing demo class so this is for so here the event handling is done by a event dispatching thread not by main thread the peculiarity of swing is that event handling is performed by a event dispatching thread and the for the line swing utilities dot invoke later that lines are required for this event dispatching thread here it what it will do is it will put the events in a queue and when its turn comes it will be served and that event will be handled and for that we are using the invoke later method so you don't know, want to know the details in depth just understand that in swing the events are handled by a event dispatching thread so this are the explanation of this program jframe is a defines a rectangular window with the title bar close minimize maximize and restore button and also a system menu will be there and even if you close the top level window is closed the program will not be terminated for that we have to use jframe dot exit on close and swing demo object is created on event dispatching thread not on main thread and swing programs are event driven and this event is handled or executed on event dispatching thread which is provided by swing we are not handling we are not handling the threads it is even handlers are defined though even handlers are defined by a program they are called on thread that was not created by our program they are handled by even dispatching thread created by swing itself so first program is a simple demonstration of a swing application here there is another program the demonstrate even handling here we are creating a text field and we are handling an event here we have to import java x dot swing and we are adding that to a j applet window inside init method we have to uh, define that things required for event dispatch thread that is swing utilities dot invoke and wait new runnable inside run method we are invoking make gui method inside make gui we are setting the layout to flow layout then we are created an text field then add that text field to the content pane and here we are using text field so when you enter data it raises an event called action event for that we have to register action listener so to that text field we are adding action listener and we are handling it in a method action performed method and when an event is raised the in the status window we will fetch the value of text entered and display that value when a text when user uh, enter the text and press the enter key which event is raised action event is raised here action event is handled in action performed method so when you run this program you get the output like this there is a text field when you enter the text and press that enter key it is handled by action performed method inside that we are displaying the text value the value that we entered in the text box in the status window the value we entered here is this is a test that string is displayed in status window so in this session we got an overview about layout managers and we familiarized the layout managers like flow layout manager border layout manager and grid layout manager then we understand the difference between awt and swing what are the main difference between awt and swing awt components are platform dependent and the look and feel of the components are provided by the platform not by java but swing components are platform independent so awt components are heavy weight while swing components are lightweight and swing supports pluggable look and feel we can change the look and feel during run time using one or two lines of code and swing provides more flexible and more powerful components and it follows model view controller architecture simple variant of model view controller architecture that is ui delegate architecture where model represents data view represents presentation and controller act as interface between model and view so this is the last video tutorial uh, related to gui 
we have covered applet then uh, awt controls awt uh, and event handling in java then layout managers and overview of swing so next tutorial session will be on java database connectivity thank you